In this video, we're going to talk about an important aspect of stoichiometry called limiting reactants. You're also going to hear this called limiting reagents. So depending on the book that you're reading or the site that you're referencing, you may see either one used. Now, a limiting reactant is really important because it has an important role in how you're going to make your, uh, your, your products. So a couple things to remember here is a limiting reactant limits the extent of the reaction and therefore determines the amount of product that is formed. That's a key important point. It determines the amount of product that's formed. Now what we're going to focus on is we're going to focus on this aspect here as to how we're going to figure out the limiting reactant. Well, the limiting reactant quite lim literally limits the reaction. So it's really important to figure out which one of our reactants is the limiting reactant in order to determine how much actual product is made. The opposite of limiting reactant is an excess reactant. If you were to say run out of both reactants at the exact same time, it would be said to be both of them limiting. Otherwise, you'd have one limiting and everything else would be an excess reactant. Typically, your limiting reactants are also going to be your most expensive because it, you prefer to have leftovers of something that's cheaper rather than something that's more expensive. All right, so here's a thought problem for you. Let's say you wanted to bake some cookies in an oversimplified situation, and you need one bag of dry cookie mix, one cup of sugar, and two eggs. So if you look in your cabinet, you find there's three bags of cookie mix, seven cups of sugar, and four eggs in the refrigerator. How many complete batches of cookies can you make? I'll give you a moment to think about it, so you should actually pause your video at this point. Hopefully you were able to come up with the fact that you could make two batches of cookies. And the reason we could only make two batches of cookies is because we're going to run out of eggs. Once you run out of eggs, all you're going to have left is sugar and cookie mix. So if we were to base the amount of cookies we could make solely on our cookie mix, we could make three batches. Since we need one bag of cookies to make the cookies overall and we have three bags total. Well, if we were to rely on the sugar, we need one cup of sugar to make one batch of cookies. Well, we're looking in that cabinet, we found seven cups. So according to our sugar alone, we should be able to make seven batches of cookies. However, because we need two eggs for every one batch, and because we only have four eggs, we're only going to be able to make two batches of cookies. This is an oversimplified everyday use of a limiting reactant type problem. This right here is more akin to what you're going to see in class. So in a simple synthesis reaction, 8 moles of aluminum reacts with 9 moles of oxygen to form how much aluminum oxide? Now at first glance you might look at this problem and say, there's no way I can do it. Well, like every stoichiometry problem, and again, limiting reactants are just a simplified stoichiometry problem, you start out with a balanced chemical equation. So in a synthesis reaction we have aluminum, reacts with oxygen, that's O2, to form aluminum oxide, Al2O3. Well, right now we have one aluminum on the left, two on the right. We have two oxygens on the left, three on the right. So the more difficult one to balance first is going to be our oxygen. Looking at the subscripts, we realize that we have to find a common denominator. The common denominator would be a 6. To get to that point, we'll need the coefficient of a 2 in this place here, a 3 here, and a 4 here. This is simply balancing equations and it's nothing new. Now in order to figure out our limiting reactant, we need to figure out which one of our two substances is going to produce less aluminum oxide. Less aluminum oxide. We're being told that in our pantry we have 8 moles of aluminum and 9 moles of oxygen. The simple way to figure out which one of these is our limiting reactant is to look at our mole ratio. Well, our mole ratio is not going to really give it away. Or will it? Well, I guess we'll figure it out. Another thing you can do is perform your stoichiometry to form the same product. Whichever one forms less product is thus your limiting reactant. So if I change 8 moles of aluminum into aluminum oxide put the 2 on top, 4 on bottom 
8 times 2 is 16 divided by 4, I will form 4 moles of Al2O3. Perform the same stoichiometry problem with oxygen. I'm sorry, that should be a 9. 3 moles O2 on bottom. 2 moles Al2O3 on top. 9 times 2 is 18, divided by 3 is 6 moles of Al2O3. So based on this right here, which one of our amounts of substances can give us less product? Hopefully you came up with 4 moles of Al2O3 being less than 6 moles of Al2O3. Well, which one of our reactants got us that? Well, this reactant right here. Our limiting reactant in this problem is aluminum. And we will form only 4 moles of Al2O3. We'll simply run out of other material, and we won't be able to produce it anymore. We could take this one step further by looking at grams instead of moles. Now, we have our exact same problem as before, whereas we had 4 Al plus 3 O2 makes 2 Al2O3s. So 18 grams and 29 grams. Well, we can't compare grams. So the first thing we're going to have to do is change them from grams into moles. Well, to go from grams into moles, we're simply going to divide by our molar mass. 18 grams divided by 27 grams per mole means we're going to have 0.67 moles of aluminum perform the same function with oxygen that we have 29 grams of oxygen divided by 32 grams per mole. 29 divided by 32 is 0.90625. Now here's where some logic might come into play and may make this a little bit simpler problem. Instead of having to perform both of these functions and translating it into aluminum oxide, we could look at the balanced chemical equation. Based on our count, balanced chemical equation, we should have more moles of aluminum than we do moles of oxygen. Well, is this the case? 0.67 moles of aluminum compared to 0.90625 moles of oxygen. In fact, it happens to be the opposite. So according to our balanced chemical equation, we should have more aluminum. Well, we don't, however. Therefore, our aluminum is again our limiting reactant. And remember, limiting reactant determines the amount of product made. So we're going to use the amount of limiting reactant to determine our product by converting it into the moles of the other. Moles of aluminum here, moles of Al2O3 up here, balanced chemical equation, 2, 4, 0.67 times 2, divided by 4 gives us 0.335 moles. However, we might even want to go one step further and figure out our grams. If we were, all we'd have to do is multiply by molar mass. Otherwise, because the answer is not specified what we look for, we go with 0.35 moles of Al2O3. This, in a nutshell, is limiting reactants. Like everything else with stoichiometry, it simply requires quite a bit of practice. Take the time to review this video and be prepared for questions in class.